Hey guys, welcome to episode five. I cannot believe I'm halfway through this season. That is right. I'm only going to have 10 episodes this season and then I'm going to come back for season two, probably a week or two after then. So I'm going to be taking a week or two break in between each season. Hope you guys don't mind, but we are to the halfway mark with this season and this is probably going to be the most disturbing case for this season when it comes to everything that went down here and it this case literally makes my blood boil, but it was definitely a case that just stuck with me. Um, so this is a very newer case than some of them. I know uh, Brooke Skyler Richardson, the first episode was pretty recent too, but this one took place in 2018, so just like two years ago, and I follow along with this case from the get-go of the missing persons and then when everybody found out about it, and I was just devastated, and I literally watched all the footage that was put out of like the cops body cams and like that type of ordeal oh my gosh so this is going to be the case of chris watts he is one pos and oh okay i do it story time so i'm kind of giving it away so let's just go ahead and jump into it okay so chris and shan ann watts um well before that before she was Watts, they met through Facebook, um, of all places, and he had sent her a friend request, and she just kind of thought, oh, okay, whatever, um, you know, what could this hurt, and in a brief Facebook Live video that she has on her page, she talked about this, and how he had sent her the Facebook request, and that she just thought, oh, nothing of it, and she said, and funny enough, eight years later, here we are, married, we have two kids and we live in Colorado. So they did in fact get married in 2012. Shan Ann was a stay at home mom and she was working for a company called Thrive, I believe. I think it was Thrive. It was one of those type of businesses where she's selling products and like growing her team and that type of thing through social media. So she stayed at home with the girls while she did so. She was always on Facebook endorsing the products and going live and just trying to be very personal with people. She had a very uplifting attitude and um, a lot of people really liked Shannon. And you might think that I am saying Shannon because I did label this episode Chris Watts, but her name is actually Shan Ann. It's a very unique name, but I just wanted to mention that so that you guys didn't get confused with it. But so... Uh, Chris had a really good job. He worked out in oil fields, working with oil tanks, and um, had like a work truck and that type of ordeal. So there was like an office that he worked in, or I guess like a the place of business, but he was mainly out like in the oil fields. But he had a good job, and she was able to stay at home with the babies. Um, in a very nice home, they had two little girls, Bella, who was four, and Celeste, who was three. And on June 11th, 2018, Shan Ann announced the news of a baby on the way. She was wearing a shirt that said, oops, we did it again. And she wore it and sat up her phone for a Facebook Live where Chris walked into the kitchen and very awkwardly was just kind of like, oh, I like that shirt. And then she, I guess, had to pick up the test and show him, like, well, it's actually, like, I'm surprising you. I'm pregnant again. And he picks up the pregnancy test. And mind you, he's on live Facebook. So people are, like, watching and stuff. He just kind of awkwardly, like, giggles and is, like, um, while looking at the test, he's, like, oh, so pink means, because usually pregnancy tests are, like, you know, pink on the ends. And... Shannon stops him before she said before he says anything else and she's like it's just a test <laughs> and he still says something like does it mean another girl and she's just like I don't know it's just the test so it's very awkward it's kind of like she was a little irritated over like his reaction with everything that she had set up and I think she was trying to make it look more perfect through Facebook than what it really was at home 
But sadly, during this time, Chris was actually emailing another woman at work and starting to start an affair. Her name was Nicole Kessinger, and I'm going to be calling her Nikki. And the reason I say this is because Shan Ann, one of her best friends, is actually, her name is Nicole too. She goes by Nikki too, but I'm going to stick to saying Nikki for the woman, for the woman that had the affair. I'm just going to say it. Chris's mistress. Um, and I'll say Nicole when I'm talking about Shannon's friend. At first, it wasn't really anything. Nikki had sent out an email to all the men that go out to the oil fields just talking about something at work. And Chris replies with, oh, thank you, whatever. I hope the rest of your day is great. And I guess from there, they kind of started talking a little bit. So next thing you know, she sends Chris another email saying something along the lines as, thank you for the talk yesterday morning. It really meant a lot. Um, yada, yada, yada. On June 22nd, Chris and Shan Ann leave without the kids to San Diego for an earned trip that she got through Thrive. So they're out there with all of Shan Ann's friends that work through Thrive too, but Chris is with her and they're posting these pictures of hugging and being close and in love and all this kind of stuff all over Shannon's page. After that short trip, Shannon packs up, packs up her and the girls' bags and literally turns around and flies out again to spend the summer with her parents and Chris's parents because they both live in North Carolina. So she was gonna stay with her family but visit Chris's family too. Unfortunately, Chris had to stay at home because he had to work, but it actually worked out in his favor and not so much Shannon's. While she was gone, Chris started texting Nikki. So they had exchanged these emails back and forth, just friendly or whatever, and Nikki knew he was married. She said, thank you for like this conversation that you had the other day. It meant a lot to me. And he's like, you know, I just like being able to talk to people who understand me and blah, blah, blah. And during this conversation, Nikki replied with, yeah, I really hope one day that I have the perfect house, the perfect spouse, or, you know, the perfect house, the kids, and to be with someone like you, like you have with your wife. And he just kind of replies with something like, oh, well, it's, you know, not always what it seems. Blah, blah, blah. It's just, it, it, it just does not even matter to this case, honestly. But regardless, during those, she said that she was not comfortable emailing back and forth through, I guess, their work emails. So he gave her his work phone number. So I guess he had two phones. He had his personal and then like his work phone. So he gave her that number. So while Shan Ann was away in North Carolina, Chris and Nikki started texting nonstop. I literally mean nonstop. Then he started seeing her, sleeping with her, and from the messages, it seems she was very aware of the situation. So she knew that they were married. She knew that they were living underneath the same roof, but he had told her that we are separating when she and Anne had no idea of this. But Nikki knew they were living together. She also knew that they were married. This literally happens all the time. Why are women not like catching on to this? Because she's not even just hurting Shan Ann, she's hurting herself in the end too. Anyways, although he says um, he won't be able to pull off seeing her as often, I guess he's a, meaning when Shan Ann's back in town, but he said he, did, he didn't care and that he wasn't going to stop seeing her. July 2018, Nikki even came over to their house to see Chris. She says later on in an interview with the police that she felt really uncomfortable and um, it was very short and she didn't like being there. But after seeing the house, she started feeling very guilty because she seen pictures of Shannon and thought she was beautiful. She seen pictures of Bella and Celeste. Um, I'm gonna call her Cece, they called Celeste Cece. So she saw pictures of Bella and Cece and just was really, I guess, starting to feel guilty. I mean, what do you expect? Around this time, Shan Ann is sensing something is going on in her marriage because Chris is being very distant and not like texting her a lot. And when he does, it's very short. There is a text from her to her friends asking for advice and venting about it all while Chris and Nikki are dating and exploring different places. 
literally they went all over the place while Shannon was out of town. On July 25th, Shannon called Chris and they were on the phone for 23 minutes. During that phone call, Nikki had called and left a voicemail of her giggling and saying, I missed your face. I was just calling to say hi. Call me back. Bye. As soon as Chris got off the phone with Shannon, he did call her right back. Then on July 28th, Chris and Nikki spent the night at the Great Sand Dunes. On this trip, there's photos, there's videos of them, and there's a very, very cringy video of Nikki walking towards the phone while Chris is recording and thanking him for coming with her, that she's having a wonderful time and he means a lot to her. Chris had a private locked app with photos of them together, like I guess very raunchy photos. And while Shan Ann was away, she was not only visiting her parents, like I said, but also Chris's parents, who lived close to hers. They wanted to see the girls, but while they were there, um, there was definitely a falling out. So Cece, the youngest, has a severe tree nut allergy, and Shan Ann told, um, I don't even know her name, Chris's mom before she came because her mom or his mom wanted to grocery shop before everyone came. So she sent her a list of things that CC could not have ahead of time. Shan Ann posted about this all on her Facebook, like I guess in like a private group that the police later had access to or people got access to and screenshot of her explaining um, she was pretty much venting to this group of friends of hers on like this private group on Facebook talking about how she literally gave Chris's mom a list of stuff that Cece could not have and one of them is pistachios and as soon as they walked in there was a big bag of pistachios on the counter. So Shan Ann said she walked over to it, she grabbed the bag and she hid it somewhere. She said Cece can't have those. She's literally severe allergic so she could die. Well then I guess their cousins were over, so I don't know if it's uh, Chris's sister or brother who has kids, but their kids were over and they were up at the counter eating ice cream. And when Shan Ann asked what kind it was, it was pistachio. And I've heard it both ways. Some people have said that Shan Ann walked in and Cece was already eating it and was very scared and was like, oh my gosh, that has Trina in it. What are you doing? But other people say that Shannon walked in before Cece got a bowl and said, is that pistachio? She can't have that. She's allergic to tree nut. I told you that. And his mom said, well, you know what? She's going to have to learn that sometimes she can't have everything she wants. Although she was literally giving it to the other two. It's messed up either way. But um, I guess Shannon threw a fit right there in front of all the kids yelling at Chris's mom. And Chris obviously is not there because he's at work really hanging out with his mistress. She of course uh, tries talking to Chris about it and he kind of gets mad because I guess his parents had already contacted him. He knows about the whole falling out and so in the end Chris is just mad. Chris texts her um, that she made a huge scene with his parents and I guess around that time it was one of the girls' birthdays so Shan Ann decided to throw a birthday party at her parents' house and Chris's parents didn't show up like they were originally going to. And this made Chris very mad, even though, again, he's not even there and it's his own kid's birthday party. Ugh. He blamed Shannon, and in text, she said she did nothing wrong, that she had told his mom ahead of time that Cece could, what she could and could not have. She also stated that she didn't tell them not to come to the party. They just decided not to come. At this time, she finally tells Chris that he changed when she left and that he must like being alone. And if that's what he really wants, then he could just stay alone. She said she was tired of being treated this way and that she wasn't going to let what he was doing affect her and the baby that she was carrying. On July 31st, Chris flies out to North Carolina. And Nikki, his mistress, says during an interview that during this time, it was right after she had went to the house. She said she's seen how pretty Shan Ann was, how cute the girls were, how beautiful their house was, and told Chris, you should work this out with your wife, apparently. So Chris flies out there and tells Nikki that he's going to try to work it out with his wife. Chris texts her, though, once he gets there and says that Shan Ann wasn't interested in rekindling their marriage. He says it's over and when we get home, the house is going up for sale. On August 4th, while Shan Ann is texting her friend that she's paying for the shit Chris's family has done and needs a stiff drink, 
Nikki is Googling wedding dresses on her phone for two hours. She then spies on both Chris and Shan Ann's Facebook pages. Shan Ann, her Facebook page was public because she was doing Thrive. So you could literally, even now, her Facebook page is live. You can literally get on there. It's public. You can see it. Shannon goes on to text her friend that it's not going well and that she has cried every day since Chris had been there. On August 7th, they all return back home. The same day, Shan Ann is, messing, is messaging her friend. She says, and I have all the notes of these text messages, so it'll be a little bit while reading these, but she says, Chris told me last night he's scared to death about this third baby, and he's happy with just Bella and Celeste and doesn't want another baby with crying emojis. Her friend replies, he's just scared. Everything will be fun once the baby comes. Shannon then says, he has changed. I don't know who he is. And then her friend says, what do you mean? And Shannon goes on to say, he hasn't touched me all week, kissed me, talked to me, except for when I'm trying to figure out what is wrong. He's been distant since I left. Her friend says, what's the deal with the parents? Maybe he's distanced because of that. Was he on board with you leaving for that long? Could it be resentful? And Shannon says, he said they apologized and they didn't come to Celeste's party because they were scared of me. That's bullshit. If you were sincerely sorry and love your son and grandkids, you would reach out and say that. He was totally on board. We decided to do it together. Quality time with everyone. I'm supposed to go tomorrow for a 4D ultrasound and gender. Gender reveal next Saturday. I just want to cry. We've never had a problem in our relationship like this. No joke. Never. This is total left field. He was submissive to his parents last night as usual. He hadn't, he hasn't asked me once about how I'm feeling or the baby. I was vomiting the other day so bad and he just existed. Shannon then says Chris texted her. I don't know where my head is at. I will fix it though. Her friend says, "Oh, honey, it will be okay. Just give him time. He's adjusting to the idea of the baby. He's scared. He shouldn't be doing this to you, but he's a good guy. He will fix it. Shan Ann says, what if he doesn't love me anymore? And her friend says, that's impossible. He loves you. Shan Ann says, tomorrow is eight years we started dating. The next day on August 8th, Shannon texts her friend again and says, he said we are not compatible anymore. He refuses to hug me after he said he will try to work it out. He said he thought another baby would fix his feelings, said he refused couples counseling. The same day, Nikki was Googling, marrying your mistress. Shannon then says, I have no idea what happened. Her friend replies with, go through his phone. Make sure there isn't some other bitch I have to kill. <laughs> I love her. Shan Ann replies, this is total left field. And her friend says, why no to counseling? And Shannon says, he says he's not sitting in no damn, on no damn couch saying what he just said to me to a stranger. Her friend says, oh Jesus. And Shan Ann replies, I found some in our area. And if anything, this baby and kids deserve him to go. I haven't slept much this week. My eyes burn from crying so much. I canceled gender reveal. Nicole is going to tell me today. That's the friend I was telling you guys about. Um, I need happy news right now. I said to him, how is this a few months? We were so intimate, but I thought in love when I left. He said he has a lot of time, he had a lot of time to think. I said, you sat here in this living room and said you think it would be a good thing to have another baby. We talked it out a lot beforehand and we agreed to do this. You were so excited and happy. Her friend says, I think he will come to his senses and feel like an ass in a few months. And Shan Ann says, I grabbed his hand during the ultrasound and he didn't grab back. I cringed. He rejected sex night we arrived home. Only thing I can think of, even though I don't think it, he has it in him, is another girl. Her friend said, did you go through his phone? Do you ask, did you ask if there was someone? Shan Ann said, he said last night, opposites attract, but this isn't working anymore. I asked, but he denied. No, I didn't look. He's deleting messages from his dad. I'm sure he's not that stupid. Her friend said that this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't sound like him. He loves and adores you. A lot of the same is kind of said back and forth between the two. And Shannon then says, so just like that, you're done. No trying to work it out. Divorce. He said, well, not like tomorrow. The, her friend says, I'm going to kick his ass. WTF. Shannon says maybe she'll call his mom and tape it and suck it up and make things right with her. They talk about the relationship issues with his parents and how he says she put a dagger between him and his dad. Shannon says he slept in the basement last night. It's taking everything in me not to flip out on him and them like every ounce of my body. 
On August 9th, Shannon posts a photo to Facebook of a big doll covered on their couch with the caption, I don't know what to think about this. While with crying laughing faces, Bella had apparently put her doll on the couch and kind of covered it up in what looked like a dead body. I'm putting this in here because a lot of people were like, just, oh my god, that happened like days before this. Because we are getting up to the end of this. Um, so she texted her friend again that day on uh, August 9th that Chris one minute agreed to go out of town for the weekend, just the two of them, and then 30 minutes later he deleted his Facebook account. She thought it was really fishy. She says Chris is acting a little better and talking more. Her friend is very relieved. She says he is still distant. And, and this is the end of part one of season one, episode five, Chris Watts. If you'd like, go ahead and jump over to part two to finish out this case.